The A1 bullseye jig is no more. That's a, that's a sad fact that we have all lived with. However, we have something, let's call it better. Anyway, so I am here with Phil with Framen Manufacturing. Oh, do? And what we're looking at here is this blue jig, which is the Framen Bullseye Jig. That's correct. Now, before we dive into all the features that come with it, let's talk about a little bit of the history, right? So we're all used to, um, for years, I guess, the staple deadbolt installation jig was the A1 bullseye, mm -hmm. and it was red. Correct. I mean, I grew up using that jig. Now, I didn't realize there was all these features on it. Maybe the lock father took a few off. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, is what happened, though, is when A1 went out of business, the jig went away. Correct. And you guys have recently um, brought it back. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited a little bit, if you could share a little bit of the journey of going from not having this to having this. Was it hard to um, replicate? How close is it to the A1 jig? Well, it's exactly the same as the A1 jig. The um, When A1 went out of business, uh, A1 was a small company, was bought by a bigger company, was bought by a bigger company, and the bigger company finally said, we're just gonna close them down and we actually made a few calls asking about if they were selling the company and they said, no, we're throwing everything in the garbage, locking the doors and forgetting about them. So that happened. And that's hard for people like you and Eddie here, mm -hmm. isn't it? We know it literally got thrown in the garbage. It, yeah, that's exactly what the guy said. I mean, yep. he wouldn't call me back and three or four times and finally I got a call back. He said, leave me alone. We're just locking the doors and that's that. And there's we're not doing anything with it. So um, I knew one of the guys at A1 and he checked with, he checked with corporate, you know, who he used to work with and they said, we're done. We don't want anything to do with it. We don't care about it. It's not, you know, there's no, there's no protection on it. Yeah. So um, he actually was able to get me the drawings and we went to town. So this is made off the original drawings. It is. Yep. So it's, I mean, the same thing, right? Far as, as good as we can do. <laughs> yeah, exactly like it. So, yeah, I mean, the parts are interchangeable with an old A1 bullseye. Um, there were a few, um, you know, a few slight things we've done. You know, they the little washers that go in here in between the, the spacers for the um, back set, those are slightly different, but it's, the, the rings are all interchangeable. If somebody's got an old A1 and they want to replace those rings, um, either set, yeah, they'll, they'll fit right in, so. So yeah, everything dimensionally is exactly the same. Awesome, now did you think about making it red? No. No, no, we needed something different. Okay, so. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and I think they powder coated it, we anodized it. So that was, we're, we're framing, we like blue a little better than red, so that's what we went with. Fair enough. So, um, so if you could kind of walk us through each one of the <clears throat> features. Sure. So uh, again, basically the exact same thing as the A1. Uh, when you uh, get the jig, uh, these two inch and a half um, rings will be uh, in the in the tool. Everybody pretty much puts the Allen wrench in there and removes them because everybody uses two and an eighth inch these days for pretty much every lock that they install. So um, keep these handy, but very few people use them anymore. So two and an eighth inch um, ring on the inside. So standard 161 prep, uh, what we call that in the door world. Um, and if we could really quick, so we actually have the lock father behind the cameras here real quick. And I'd like to ask you, do you still have these rings or did you toss them? I had my brother make me a set of rings. Okay. Because he was a machinist. And yeah, I still have them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. And so, yeah, the, um, I can't remember our exact dimensions, but this will work on doors up to, I think, two and a quarter inches wide and down as low as an inch and a quarter, um, as far as the throat goes when you tighten the tool up. Um, so good for a variety of doors. Um, of course, everybody typically uses inch and three eighths or inch and three quarter. The middle part where you're going to put your cross bore or your uh, bolt bore in is uh, self-centering, so you don't have to adjust anything there. As you tighten it up, it stays in the center, so you're never going to be off center on it. A neat little feature here is there's nothing if you're going from two and three eighths to two and three quarters. You just flip these little tabs up and 
that's set for two and three quarter from edge of the door to center of the hole and flip these up and you've got it two and three eighths. One of the things that we did add to the tool is we put at two and three quarter spacing at 12 and six o'clock, two little one eighth inch holes. So if you're installing a lever lock, uh, you just clamp it on the door, get yourself a small drill that's just slightly under an eighth of an inch and you can pilot drill your through bolt holes for your levers. So that's for um, Schlage, like a Schlage A-line um, or a Marx lever, I think also uses the exact same spacing. And I think there's a couple other levers out there that use that same uh, dimension for the through bolt holes. I think that's a great little add too, mm -hmm. because if you're not installing a dead bolt, in a commercial lock to be able to have those there just saves a quick step yeah and yeah we just had a little bit of real estate to work with and we figured we'd put it to good use um one thing that a1 did with theirs uh, they set it up so if you have interconnected locks or if you always install a doorknob and a deadbolt at five inches or five and a half or whatever you want center to center uh, there's a pair of straps you can buy that attach right here and you can put a second bullseye up above, clamp everything on the door at one time, uh, drill your holes with your hole saw or whatever tool you use, and you'll always be exactly in the same spot. Awesome. Yep, outside of that, you know, get a ring in here for your one inch uh, bolt bore. And so, yeah, so that's basically it in a nutshell. Talk to me about this fabric on the inside here. What what, what, kind of, what kind of fabric is that? Um, you know, I couldn't tell you exactly what it is. We did change that slightly from what E1 was using. Uh, we found this to be a little bit easier to clean. Um, just kind of, you know, when you're drilling, say, a steel door and you, you get chunks of metal, this is a little bit easier to wipe it off and mm -hmm. it doesn't get embedded inside there. It's not very thick. So um, go to the next door. If it's a wood door, you're not putting marking the door up with a, a chunk of metal stuck in there. So, um, and again, these are replaced if you ever needed to take those off and put them on there, but uh, put a new set on. Yeah, can't Very tell cool. you exactly what the material is, but yeah, they're a bugger to put on when we assemble them, trying to get them put in there, right? All right. Well, I mean, they're really nice because, I mean, like you said, you don't want to be scratching doors. Mm -hmm. And I believe right. the A1 is kind of bumpy. Wasn't it? Yeah, kind of bumpy stuff. It seemed to be a little more tacky, but yeah. yeah. So actually, a, pe a few people that have bought these have made mention about how the material is different and they like it better. So okay. Mm -hmm. And last question. I mean, it might be um, obvious, but I want to talk for a minute about the fact that you have two different screws right here. Sure. Talk, if you could just talk us through that. Yep. So when you first, uh, we're going to loosen this one all the way up. And so when you uh, go up to a door and you tighten this up, we're going to use the big wing nut to tighten that up. Going to get that tight on the door and then we're going to just turn this and what that does when we when you're tightening this on the door um, this is going to put pressure this way on the jig and it's going to kind of want to wow out a little bit like that. By turning this and cranking this down now you're going to even the pressure out on the door mm -hmm. a little bit more. So pretty much pushing that out. Yep. Correct. That's going to keep us straight on the door so that we're not doing one of these which is very cool i think it's probably the most underrated feature mm -hmm. on these compared to like a little cheapy yep right is yep. being able to have that so that's good yep so so yeah overall really nice tool we've done well with them um, we seem to run out of them every month but they're back in stock now um and yeah so been a good seller for us we're glad we got into it and keep some machine shop popping awesome now uh Dad, now you have you sitting back in the back here. Yeah. Talk to us for a minute. Like, I mean, do you endorse this jig? Yeah, like, because like, with the little one eighth inch holes, you know, to put the through bolts. Through bolts. Yeah, better than putting that other thing, the cup, as I call it. Yep. Little teacup. Yeah. But you know, separate, and you never get it perfect. You know. Yep. But yeah, that's a great, great jig. I mean, and and would you say from your from your experience in the industry like with all the jigs you've used like if you're buying one if i'll buy any new ones would be that because most of the jigs don't come with any uh i call it rubber let's say on the inside and you scratch doors up and you don't want that <laughs> right absolutely yeah. But yeah, it's great. Well, Phil, I appreciate you coming on, talking to us a little bit about the history, walking it through it. I mean, how much more fun is it to have you walk through the one who recreated this tool? <laughs> I enjoy it, you know, so I appreciate you being here and uh, walking us through this. 
And of course, I'll be putting a link in the uh, notes below where you can go ahead and check this uh, uh, jig out and purchase it if you'd like. Yeah. A1 products have been good for us. We've done a few others, as you know, and yeah. So, and a team effort. I mean, there's there's a lot of other, other people besides me behind everything at Frame. Sounds good, Phil, thank you. So yeah, let us know in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Ready? Let me fix my hair. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I didn't realize there was all these features on it. Maybe the lock father took a few off. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Special guest in attendance. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess this is the end of the video, and it's time for you and I to part ways until next time. But hey, before you go, I really do want to make sure that you know that when you comment on our videos and you include the hashtag LockBoss, you automatically get hooked up to win cool stuff that we give away live here on YouTube every Tuesday. So we'd love to have you join us. We'd love to have you comment and I look forward to reading them soon.